around the center of Armory City. There's also some bus parks, parks next to the hospital and time to catch Armory Forest Park. You can see still some cherry blossoms. There's our car. It's a nice retreat. It's actually close to the hospital here. Can smell the cherry. It's a weeping cherry. It's still past its peak, but still There's plenty of flowers in the Yazakura. It's in full bloom. They come out after the regular cherries. There are many different varieties of cherries and also in uh, Northern Tahoku there are many fruit trees as well. Apple blossoms and cherry blossoms. It's just so good they can still get to play even on the early May. The small green bus is the bus to take you to the stone circle and also comes back and then I've got off uh, just after the uh, highway and I'm planning to walk over through the residential area to uh, the Sanai Mariyama site. It's just sort of awkward to go there directly, but this way is about a two mile walk. It's a nice afternoon. You see some houses in Almory. On the path, about a half a mile along the walk, it's a small shrine in the local area. There are foxes and animals and a very interesting uh, phallus monument for fertility. Praying for fertility. It's very important. There's water for cleaning. Very peaceful small shrine. So come further down the shrine, see small shrines to stones. Right next to the shrine, people doing their garden. Holding out. This is the car park of the shrine. It's a flagpole. You can see the location. Loops are out. Time for planting. Seems like these are very modern new housing areas. However, let's not forget the spirits and ancestors. It's a small community emergency center fire center. So we find, again, this mixture of living close to nature with modernity. This is the Sanai Mariyama site. different 
buildings and renovations is much larger, you can see. construction of some of the Jomon buildings. Welcome to Jomon village. This is very exciting Jomon village. This is the information of a Jomon village. The various rules, opening hours, That's a map. And this is the village. It's time to explore. To prevent drying, close the door. It's really humid inside here. It's this woody smell. This construction. There was a pumping. You can see the right amount of water is being kept to keep these pits. These are examples of pit houses. It's really quite hot and humid inside. Reconstruction of a large pillar supported building. They've reconstructed it and are trying to move from the remains to reconstruct. So these foundations that we saw inside the building are holes where you can find very large cedar trees, the roots being put. So the site is surrounded by some wood and a fence. So you actually have to walk around a long way to get into the building. The mountain on that side is, the stone circle is, I guess about uh, seven miles in that direction, 10 kilometers. Inside the next shed, you can see more of a construction, trying to preserve the wooden remains of the pit through a very humid, temperature controlled environment. So keep the doors shut so you can keep the atmosphere good for preservation. And in that building, children's graves were found. Pottery is differentiated by those just from cooking by their broken rims or bottoms. So that is inside this building to preserve it. Inside the next hut is a section you can see how all the fragments of shells and pottery is just scattered. And I've left this in this small building so that you can see what it will look like. And also to preserve for future archaeological research when different technologies become available. Probably underneath here there's a lot more of us. That's the north mound that's shown at the time of excavation. The pot sherds covering the mound surface were created in the middle Jomon period about 3000 BC, about 5000 years ago the settlement. So that's the North Valley wetlands was used as a dumping period 
around 7,000 years ago, or four, no, 6,000 years ago. So the moisture-rich conditions allow even organic material has been preserved and discovered here. So you can see inside the house, providing an example of the buildings. Being on stilts will have kept it away from certain animals. So this is more of these pillar supported buildings. thought to be a raised floor house a similar viewing as the one before you can see strings possibly to hold the left door go open and shut it's a grave and some other buildings some of the houses are not raised off the ground they are in fact laid into the ground You can see the construction here. And you can utilize wood for spatching. It has to survive a really cold winter. In the summer, it's not as hot as in the south of Japan. You can see the thatching. You can see the door. The rope has strung the wood beams together. Very strong beams and would have provided some warmth. pit above the fire possibly this was for letting the smoke out and then here for maybe drying food fish this may well be a smokehouse really constructed a lot of interesting houses reconstructed this is made of bark you can see of the bark but also they put wood at the bottom to keep the soil coming in so this is the living excavation site and really quite an ext extensive one. So this is a very interesting for buildings. It's a very nice site. Remains of a large pit building, about 15 meter long, built in the early Jomon period, around 3,500 BC. So this has had human settlement 
for such a long period of time. The entrance area in the museum is back there. This large pit building is longer than 10 meters. This may have been a gathering place for prayers. Very tall cedar trees. Smell the scent of burnt wood. Fireplace. It's a really large beams, really solid. Interested in how they're joined together. Just to the south of the large foot building, it's the South Mound. You can see it is a slight mound. Use this disposal of different things and cooking to it. You can see I keep this door to control the environment. Mm -hmm. I've excavated. You can see you can dig for different layers. find different artifacts. Disinfected gum boots. This is a large display in here. Preserved. So you can see many different sculptures. Stones. Hunting and fishing were really dominant. Resources from the sea. <laughs> A 
fish that come with seafood from the Tsube. Multiple layers of pottery. See how this display. Really nicely designed, very pleasant. Also have a micro fossils, edible burdock, bean, gourd, wild grape, different seeds, not only chestnut forest but also other crops which grew. More than 2,000 dogu were excavated from this site. This is quite remarkable. Just how many people were living here over a thousand years or so. So it's really a long period of habitation. This is a small shrine close to the seaside. This is right opposite to the Prefectural Museum. You need to check when the Prefectural Museum will open again. It's damaged in the earthquake. Just two blocks away from the ocean. Some old restaurants or buildings can be found still amongst the modern contemporary structures. This is on the road next to the coast. Omri is a coastal town. There's many large avenues and streets and famous bridge, quite a modern bridge across the bay. Should have bought the boat. The access points are easy to reach. There are marinas and we're protected harbour.
the large bee. It's clear and cold water. People are fishing. You can see the mountains in the distance. The northern part of Tohoku Peninsula. The northern part of Honshu. This is the north of the main island of Japan. Some of these buildings have been used more in the past than now. Boats can be moored and fish taken. Get to see the different factories around Oh, morning.